This Should Concern You, an article written by Mike Adams, principal of Adams Financial. This should concern you. So much talk about the United States government debt of $30 trillion. That is a problem. But even more is worldwide debt of $307 trillion. The U.S. debt stands at 123% of U.S. GDP. The $307 trillion worldwide debt stands at 300% of worldwide GDP. Six of the G7 nations now have government debt greater than 100% of their GDP. These countries, Japan at 255%, Italy 144%, the United States at 123%, France at 110%, Canada 106%, and the UK at 104%. There are 54 nations that are on the verge of a financial crisis. 22 of those nations have either already defaulted on their debt or on the razor's edge of default. And there are only five ways out of excessive debt, and the world has excessive debt. Number one, the world can grow their economies faster and pay down the debt. Number two, the world's nations can raise taxes, holding spending constant, and use the higher taxes to pay down debt. Number three, reduce spending on education, infrastructure, and the social net and use the savings to pay down debt. That means cutting social security, health care, unemployment benefits, food stamps, agricultural subsidies, and more. Number four, increase inflation so there is more currency to pay down the debt owed. Number five, default on interest payments and reduce or delete principal payments. 3.3 billion people live in countries facing the risk of defaulting on their sovereign debt. African nations are paying interest rates that are four times the rate paid in the United States, and as much as eight times the rates as paid in some of the wealthiest Eurozone countries. Think back to the 2007-2008 financial crisis. The United States began with subprime homeowners defaulting on their debt. Subprime mortgages had been packaged together into CDOs, collateralized debt obligations, as were prime mortgages. Those CDOs were actively traded from bank to bank, and to ensure payment, some firms developed CDS, which are credit default swaps. As long as the economy was doing well, the trading of those CDOs was creating high profits for Wall Street and the banking sector. When the music stopped, when the economy slowed, the subprime CDO prices dropped, wiping out profits. Banks and institutions began to dump their CDOs and exercise credit default swaps. The panic in the CDOs spread to the prime CDO mortgages, the viability of banks and Wall Street firms to survive dived. Credit dried up even for borrowers that had solid collateral and reputations, and the economy slowed even further. Bear Stearns collapsed. Even three months after that, the Fed, along with other central banks, were claiming that there was little risk of recession. That changed in the second half of 2008. It was as if the Fed suddenly discovered the risk was not just a recession. It was then that Ben Bernanke told Congress that there was a crisis heading toward calamity. Vice President Cheney said this was a Hoover, Hoover time. Senator Paul Martinez served on the Senate Banking Committee and said the crisis was going to be Armageddon. The response was rapid. The Federal Reserve, U.S. Treasury, and central banks all around the world pumped trillions of dollars into their economies. It was not just the developed world printing money, the emerging countries borrowed to keep their economies going. It worked. The world economies recovered and worldwide GDP grew at a pace above average. The recovery launched 
a super cycle. Central banks began to offload the debt they had taken on to combat the Great Recession. Then the pandemic hit. Once again, the central banks stepped in by printing money and emerging countries added a boatload of additional debt to keep their economies growing. Today, there is little alarm raised about the very high level of debt. The last time U.S. debt was this high was at the end of World War II, when debt reached 104% of GDP. Today, it is 123% of GDP, and economists are guessing the risk of recession is reduced and a soft landing is becoming more probable. The Fed, like many central banks around the world, seem almost blind to the worldwide debt. Those same institutions were oblivious to the pending failure of the housing market collapse that brought about the Great Recession. Maybe the super cycle will lift world GDP to levels to pay off the debt, but that is highly optimistic. What will be the impact of the world debt on investments in your portfolio? The old bull Boy Scout motto was and remains, be prepared. Are you?